What's up YouTube? Zero here. And today we are in the end game. That's right, I have my end game build for the sorcerer in Dragon's Dogma 2. In this video, I'm going to go over the spells required for this end game sorcerer build. I have done a lot of different spell combinations and this is my absolute favorite one for the end game for the sorcerer in Dragon's Dogma 2. I'll go over the pawns that I recommend for this endgame sorcerer build. Of course, pawns are extremely critical to any type of build in Dragon's Dogma 2. Then I'll go over the augments and equipment for this sorcerer endgame build as well. Now, before I get into it, I do want to say if you do enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more Dragon's Dogma 2 content. I do a bunch of other RPGs and other video games, so feel free to check those out as well. It does really help out me and my channel. Thank you so much in advance for doing so. Without further ado, time to get into the spells of this endgame sorcerer build. Spells are critical to any sorcerer build. There are a lot of great combinations and a lot of great spells for a sorcerer in Dragon's Dogma 2. However, in the end game, you're facing a lot of very difficult bosses. There are a lot of dragon bosses that you're going to have to face. The Headless Horseman is extremely difficult, as well as enhanced other bosses that you're going to have to battle as well. So the spell combination is crucial to dealing with these bosses with ease. So to deal with these bosses, I like first starting with the two heavy hitter spells on the Sorcerer in an endgame build in Meteoron and Maelstrom. Now these are the two spells you're going to have to grind for as a sorcerer completing various quests, but they are absolutely worth it. Meteoron summons meteors that crash down in a radius. This deals extremely high damage not only in the radius to lesser enemies, almost dispatching them with one hit, but it also deals high damage to bosses when it does have a direct impact. So Meteoron is my go-to spell when I am utilizing this endgame sorcerer build. I absolutely love this build and Meteoron is my go-to spell. However, there are certain instances that Meteoron just doesn't make sense for. Even though it does deal a lot of high damage, you have to make sure you're utilizing it in the right moment. Meteoron doesn't do well hitting enemies who are flying. It also doesn't hit enemies when you're in a cavern or in a crevice. Now in the end game, especially in the unmoored world, you're going to be in a lot of crevices. So sometimes the meteor may hit a wall or not get fully through to the enemy you're trying to hit. Maelstrom comes in perfect handy when this occurs. Maelstrom is absolutely fantastic. What Maelstrom does is it summons a twister or a hurricane that sucks enemies in if they're lesser enemies. And if they're more powerful enemies like bosses, it'll deal heavy damage to them. What Maelstrom's great at is dealing with enemies when you're in those caverns or tight areas, or it also does a lot of damage to flying enemies. So the combination of Meteoron and Maelstrom really does great at dealing with every situation of enemies that you can encounter. So depending on the situation is which heavy hitting spell move you're going to utilize. Personally, I like Meteoron when I'm out in the open, regardless of if I'm facing a horde of enemies or a boss in which it can deal a ton of damage to either that boss or the horde of enemies. Where I like Maelstrom is against a flying enemy. For those of you who haven't experienced this yet, Meteoron sometimes misses enemies who are flying, especially when a dragon or a griffin go airborne. So I wouldn't utilize Meteoron for that situation. I would wait for them to be on the ground. But when a dragon or a griffin are in the air, Maelstrom hits those enemies extremely hard. Also, when you're in a cavern or some form of area in which Meteoron can't hit, or you're really enclosed and Maelstrom can suck a lot of enemies into the hurricane, that's the perfect situation for Maelstrom. What I also love about Maelstrom 
is that if enemies don't see you, you can cast Maelstrom before enemies see you inside of a cavern, and it literally just sucks every enemy into your hurricane, easily dispatching them before they even see you coming. So it's absolutely perfect for that as well. In the end game, especially in the unmoored world, there are a lot of enemies hiding. So utilizing Maelstrom before you may even see the enemies is nice at clearing out an area before you go and search that area for hidden chests or other valuables that you may want to find. So Maelstrom and Meteoron are great depending on the situation and they play really well with each other. However, Meteoron is typically my go-to if I'm facing a boss or in a wide open area, while Maelstrom is more enclosed or when I'm trying to suck enemies into that vortex or against an enemy who is airborne. Now, the next two moves are extremely critical to this endgame build as well. The first is High Spell Hold. Now, what Spell Hold does is it just holds a spell. But this is critical with Maelstrom and Meteoron. The reason being is that Maelstrom and Meteoron, being two very high damage moves, they take a while to cast and you also can't move while you're casting them. So when you're in a battle, especially against a boss, sometimes it may be difficult to find the right moment to cast these or you may have to find a way to get yourself to a safe area to cast either of these spells. What spell hold does is it holds your spell so you can cast it whenever you want. Say Meteoron. You're coming up on a powerful enemy, a Chimera that you see just wandering. Well, before you even get into battle, you can cast Meteoron and spell hold it and then cast it whenever you want. This allows you to get an early advantage. Maybe you don't want to wait the 10, 15, however long seconds it is to cast a Meteoron at the beginning of battle. So you're able to cast it right away to get a significant amount of damage on that Chimera. Or maybe you want to cast your first Meteoron and right after you cast that Meteoron, you utilize your spell held Meteoron so you can get two Meteorons off on that Chimera extremely quickly. So you can deal double the damage extremely quickly. Spell hold is absolutely great for that. So you're able to cast two Meteorons or two Maelstroms in succession or a Meteoron and a Maelstrom, depending on the situation. So you can get a lot of damage off either on a boss or lesser enemies if you miss one of your major spells or you just want to use one quickly. The last spell I have is Augural Flare. Now what Augural Flare does is it latches almost this landmine onto an enemy. What this landmine does is it absorbs damage from attacks and then explodes, dealing a mass amount of damage to an enemy. Now, if you don't hit this landmine, then it's not gonna deal any damage to an enemy. And if you hit this landmine a ton, it's gonna deal a ton of damage to an enemy. So what this is great for is dealing damage to an enemy with a spell in which you can move because the other two spells you can't move while you're casting. And two, it allows quick spell. Quick spell, allows for the spell to be more quickly cast. So unlocking quick spell, you're able to utilize that on Augural Flare. Augural Flare is great in a lot of different scenarios. Maybe you don't have the time to cast Maelstrom or Meteoron. You can util utilize Augural Flare to deal a massive amount of damage to an enemy, whether it's a boss or a lesser enemy. Lesser enemies, if you hit it enough, you'll kill the lesser enemy. Bosses, you're going to deal a ton. Sometimes I've dealt a full health bar or more with All Girl Flare as long as I am hitting that landmine, making sure the explosion deals a ton of damage after it's collected all of that energy. So these are the four spells I love running with in Endgame. Meteoron for high damage dealing attack, especially in the wide open. Maelstrom for attacking enemies in enclosed areas or flying enemies. High spell hold to hold one of those two spells that take a while to cast so I can go into battle with one of those already 
prepared to destroy my enemies, and then all girl flair for situations in which I want to move while casting an extremely powerful move, or just for when I need a quicker spell that I know can deal a lot of damage on an enemy. So now that I've talked about the spells for this, let's get into talking about what pawn vocations you want with this build, also talking about the augments as well as those pawn vocations. I don't want to spend too much time talking about pawns, but there are some that really do enhance your play as a sorcerer. So the sorcerer, first off, doesn't like getting hit. I would recommend utilizing two bruisers as part of your sorcerer party. So either two fighters, two warriors, or a fighter and a warrior. Two characters that can really take the hits for the sorcerer and take the focus off of your sorcerer. Finally, as last in the party, absolutely need a mage. This sorcerer build does not have any way of healing oneself, so I would recommend a mage as part of the party to not only heal yourself as the sorcerer, but also heal your other pawns because they are the bruisers, they are taking the damage. So having a mage that can heal, get rid of debilitations, and also enhance the party is definitely the way to go. So for pawns, Definitely a mage and then two characters, two other vocations that are going to be the bruisers and take the hits. But that's all I wanted to talk about on pawns. Let's get into the augments and talk about the augments that are fantastic for the sorcerer and really enhance the build. So let's talk about the augments. I also want to briefly touch on the core skills, although those are pretty straightforward. So the augments can be crucial to any build. There's going to be some that are going to be easy to get. You just have to grind out the sorcerer. Others are going to be a little bit harder. You're going to have to grind some other vocations, but they are definitely worthwhile getting to enhance this endgame sorcerer build. So the two that I love from the sorcerer himself is Sagacity and Catalyst. Sagis City augments your magic, so that's going to be fantastic to hit enemies even harder. Catalyst, this is going to increase damage dealt by 5% when exploiting a hostile target's elemental weakness. This is absolutely fantastic when using Meteoron because you're going to be able to exploit the enemies who are weak to fire damage. So it does really come in play, especially against bosses that are weak to fire. So I do like utilizing that as well. Sagacity is great because it augments the magic of your sorcerer. Now next, the two augments that are gonna come from the mage are going to be Exaltation. So this augments your stamina recovery speed. It's gonna be all about stamina when it comes to your sorcerer. You're utilizing a lot of high stamina spells, Meteoron and Maelstrom. So you're gonna want your stamina to be recovered or as high as possible. So Exaltation augmenting your stamina recovery speed is going to be crucial for a sorcerer. Now I also like Beatitude which what this does from the mages ranking up is it's going to increase the amount of health recovered by curatives and curative magics. So in the end game, you're probably going to be hit a lot on top of that. Resting is a little different in the unmoored world. I'm not going to touch on that in this video, but you don't want to rest at inns and campsites as much because it passes time and it it eliminates your possibility of saving everyone. So being able to restore more health from those curatives, especially facing high bosses, is great for Beatitude. And of course, again, Exaltation, increasing your stamina recovery is going to be great. So Beatitude is unlocked at rank 4 of the Mage Vocation, and Exaltation is rank 9. So you are going to have to grind out the Mage Vocation if you want both of those for your Sorcerer. But they are absolutely worth getting. Now, off of the Thief, Subtlety. Subtlety decreases the likelihood of being targeted by foes. This is pretty straightforward. Your Sorcerer, you don't have much in the way of avoiding enemy attacks if they start targeting you. So you really don't want the enemies to focus on you. You want Subtlety to decrease the likelihood of being targeted by foes. You just have to get to rank 2 of the Thief 
to unlock that augment so it's not too hard to get from the thief and last is going to be on the archer i mentioned it already but you want as much stamina as possible so get endurance augment from the archer this is going to increase your maximum stamina you have to get to rank four of the archer for this but it's absolutely worth it when it comes to the sorcerer now just briefly the core skills just unlock all of them they are worthwhile of getting levitate is great to get to high places it can also help you maneuver the battlefield a lot quick spell is great i mentioned it earlier but you can qu use quick spell to cast all girl flare quicker than normal so that's great bursting bolt and magic bolt just a typical spell but can be worthwhile in conjunction with augural flare so you can have that landmine gather as much energy as possible to explode and deal damage to the enemy that you are facing and galvanize allows you to more quickly recover stamina so unlock all the core skills they are all worthwhile those six augments are absolutely fantastic so i recommend getting all six of those but now that i've talked about the augments augments and the core skills let's get into the last but not least bit of this build the equipment on the sorcerer first i'm going to talk about the equipment that matters the most on the sorcerer you are an offensive powerhouse so whatever enhances offense of course is going to be extremely important you're not going to want to get hit of course you're going to want the max defensive equipment as possible just because if you get hit, you want to defend yourself. But for offense, what's going to be most important is your weapon and the rings. So for a weapon, Dragon's Wit. It's an endgame staff that deals a ton of damage. It's going to be located in the endgame. Of course, once you get to the endgame, you're going to be able to get this Dragon's Wit. does cost 110 Worm's Life Crystals, but it is insanely powerful for a Sorcerer to get. So I recommend... If you are a sorcerer getting this first, it deals a ton of damage. If you can't get this or you haven't made it to the unmoored world yet, I do love the Lion Lord's Arch Staff. You can unlock this in the Sacred Arbor. That's the Elven Land. So both are fantastic. But of course, if you're in the end game and you want the most powerful staff you can get, Dragon's Wit is going to be it. It's extremely powerful, does a lot of damage, and is going to help carry you through those tough bosses. Now, the two rings that you're going to want to have, of course, I mentioned it earlier, you want to enhance your stamina as much as possible. So first is going to be the Ring of Momentum. This is going to moderately boost your maximum stamina. You can get this from a Cyclops drop. You can get this as a reward for completing the Phantom Ox card. You can also get this in a chest near a waterfall north of Thunderclap Cave. So there are a few areas of getting this, but of course, boosting stamina is going to be extremely important. We're utilizing a lot of heavy moves that are going to deplete stamina on top of that in the end game maybe it's just me but there have been a lot of enemies that somehow just turn to me and start chasing me so being able to dash away from them is extremely important as well hopefully y'all don't have that issue but i do have that every once in a while so just be aware of that second ring gonna be the ring of triumph now this is important because it boosts health stamina and also increases the amount of weight you can carry. All you got to do is turn in 15 Seeker Tokens and you will unlock the Ring of Triumph. So it is extremely nice to get, especially because it boosts three areas for the Sorcerer, which does really help out. But really, that Stamina boost is going to be extremely important. The hat and the legs are going to be the same place that you can get Dragon's Wit from. Both of these are absolutely fantastic for end game defense. Of course, you can get these from the Bay Wayside Shrine. They're gonna cost Worm's Life Crystals again, but they are extremely powerful. The head is gonna be the Deadly Nightshade, and the legs are going to be the Runic Gators. Both extremely powerful, great for defense and end game protection, 
for the sorcerer. Now for the body, I have the cardinal robe on. You can't get this in the same spot, but again, it's another end game. It's extremely great for defense, and I have this from the Brocker Smithy. Now, there are probably other chest pieces that you can get. However, I am running with this one and it's been doing great. It is extremely powerful and you don't have to worry about Worms Life Crystals in order to get it. That's part of the reason why I've been wearing it because I'm not always getting a ton of Worms Life Crystals just for myself because I'm also trying to get Worms Life Crystals for my pawn as well because I don't want him to die just like I don't want me to die but I need my pawn protected as well so I used gold to buy the cardinal robe from Brocker Smithy instead and then last but not least the cape I have the Saurian scale cape I've been using this for the entire game I just like the look of it most capes are pretty similar to each other. I would recommend equipping the one you want, but this one's a pretty easy one to get. You can get it from Chandler's General Store. You can also get it in the world near Stormwind Cave. There's a lot of places to get it, but use the cape that you prefer. But that's it for the final equipment, but let me know in the comments section what you think of this build. Are you running some Things similar in the end game or is yours completely different i absolutely love this the end game especially in the unmoored world is very difficult so you want a build that really helps you and the four spells meteoron maelstrom all girl flame and high spell hold really do help get you through and these equipment helps get you through i hope y'all are loving this game as much as i am let me know in the comment section what your build is or what vocation you want to see a build next for me thank you all for hitting that thumbs up button and subscribe and until next time peace